All right, so we have our accumulator installed. You can see we have our bracket on it. Um, at this point though, um, we're still gonna leave this loose so that I can uh, you know, get it positioned exactly correctly when we attach the hose. The whole idea is we want the hose as it comes out of here, it's gonna loop, a, it's gonna loop around, loop around over here and then it's gonna come back across and there should be a bracket that attaches um, to the alternator bracket and then we'll go over to the bracket where the compressor is going to sit. So we want to make sure it makes a nice gentle loop and we don't um, kink it. So I'm going to hold off on putting the hose on the accumulator and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the compressor first. That way when we uh, install the compressor, here's the compressor, this is the position that it's this is the position that it's going to be in like this when I unbolt this and take this little cover off here oil's going to want to leak out so it's going to be a lot easier if I stand this compressor up here on the bench and then I take and go over here with my hose and then take this part and attach that and then I can set the hose or excuse me set the compressor in where it's supposed to be that way I won't lose any oil so as I said, here's the compressor, and this is, uh, obviously it's a GM compressor. This is an axle style compressor, so it's all been rebuilt, took it all apart, cleaned it all up, repainted it, put a new label on it and everything. Um, here's all the fasteners that are going to hold some of the brackets on, and you can see the fasteners, they've all been, the threads have all been kind of out of focus there. There we go. So the threads have all been cleaned up real nice in that. And uh, that's something, even if you're not restoring the vehicle, it's always a good idea to do that as well because it makes it a lot easier to put it back together when you're um, threading it in by hand and it all threads in real nice. You don't have a bunch of garbage or anything in the threads. So that works real well. Um, here's the bag of the parts that got replaced on it. You can see it replaced some of the bearings in there. Um, some O-rings, clutch plate, that's usually what goes inside of them is the seals go and the bearings start to make noise or they bind up and stuff like that. So, as I said, this is an axle type compressor, very common on GM, um, Ford, Chrysler and that, they used them for years as well. Starting in the 80s, we got away from this one. As you can see, it's, it's a fairly long compressor and got some cast iron on it, some heavy duty um, steel and a bunch of brackets, the clutch, the flywheel or the pulley and everything on there. It's all pretty big, pretty heavy. So what we've done is we've gone away from that. Most of your newer vehicles now, your compressors are going to be um, aluminum, but we've got another design. So if we take a little walk here, um, we'll go outside here for a minute. We'll take a look at this uh, 89 Suburban that I have. And that particular vehicle, oh shit, it's snowing out already. Today is a cold day. We got snow coming down, so we'll take a quick look at this here. Um, but this is an 89. So starting in the early 80s, we switched to this style. This is a radial um, compressor and you can see this is all it is it's much thinner so it takes up less space has less weight um, and now like I said everything has gone to uh, basically a, a, like an aluminum uh, compressor housing now and there's a few other different designs different manufacturers so let's go back inside get out of the freaking snow here it's supposed to be spring and uh, here we are in the spring and we got snow all right let's walk back over here to our compressor so as I said compressors all rebuilt that's gonna be the next thing that we're gonna put in it um, and here are some of the brackets that hold the compressor on now I've obviously I, because we're restoring it they've all been uh, taken apart or taken off the compressor, sandblasted, painted, stuff like that. So you're probably not going to do that on an average job coming into the shop. But it does not hurt to um, take and clean up the brackets and stuff. 
they're all greasy and oily, take them over to the parts washer, give them a quick wash and that just makes putting it back together a little bit easier if everything isn't all greasy and slimy. And if we're replacing the compressor, we're going to have to take these brackets off the compressor or at least, at least these two are going to end up coming off because those are attached to the compressor and you won't get the new brackets with your compressor when you buy a rebuilt one. So let's talk about how we took this off. So when you go to take the compressor off, this bracket is actually attached three spots here on the front and then this one's on the back. It has four spots where it's attached to the compressor and then on the front here there's another bolt um, in here where um, you can slide the compressor back and forth to get your belt tensioning correct. So when uh, we take this off Instead of undoing all those bolts, you'll notice down here on the back of the compressor, there's one larger hole here, and there's a bolt that goes through that and attaches to a bracket that's attached to the exhaust manifold. And then on the front down here, here's the larger hole. This attaches to a bracket that's on the front of the engine, which is actually this bracket here. So this stud is actually going to go right into there so this would be you'd have this bracket on that stud so when we go to take this off the easy way of doing this is we take this bolt out here so this bolt here would be in here like this I'm trying not to move the camera around too much so we take that adjustment bolt out and the compressor is just going to slide down a little bit then we're going to undo the nut that is on this stud here so because this is a stud, this bracket is going to stay there. Then we can go to the back of the back of the compressor, take this bolt out, and now because that bolt's out, we can lift the compressor up and we can slide the compressor forward off this stud and remove the compressor real easy. Remember though that before you do that, you do have a wiring harness that's going to connect to it. So that goes right here on the side of the compressor. That's how we get the power to it. And then obviously the back of the compressor here, you're going to have the hose connected to it. So um, we need to be careful when we take that off. Um, we don't want to spill the oil because what you're supposed to do when you're replacing a compressor is when you take the compressor off, then you're supposed to drain the oil into a measuring cup and measure how much oil came out of the compressor and that's how much oil you're supposed to put back into the system okay so that's how we do it with a with the compressor we actually measure it and we take it out so we don't want to lose that so now once the compressor's out we can take these brackets off we can get our new compressor put these new brackets back on and now when we go to put the compressor in place now what we're going to do is we're going to take this bracket and we're going to put it on this stud first so that the front of the compressor is being held up it's not going to fall down then we go to the back and we put the nut that goes in or the bolt I should say that goes in here because this is a bolt it's not a stud and then we'll be able to um, snug that down so again this is where having nice clean threads on your bolts comes in handy because you'll be able to easily thread that bolt right into the bracket and snug it up at this point in time we're not going to go ahead and tighten the bolt down we're not going to tighten any of this stuff down up front here either because we're going to have to eventually adjust the compressor to get the proper belt tension on it and just off the top of my head, I believe also on this bolt, um, the power steering pump gets attached to it too. I have that sitting over on the bench. So that's something else that I have to do to it when I'm putting it together. It doesn't have anything to do with the air conditioning class, but it does attach to it. And you will find on certain vehicles that is the case, that the bracket for the alternator or the bracket for power steering and your air conditioning compressor sometimes these are going to share the same bracket or share some of the same mounting points um, so again another good reason why you want to take a picture 
of everything when it's together so you see how all the brackets go because sometimes they're not as easy just to look at them and say oh yeah it goes like this sometimes you have to fiddle around put them on oh that's not right that doesn't work until you get it to where where you need it but basically um, that's what you need to do to replace the compressor we're going to take it off we're going to take the brackets off we're going to get our new or rebuilt one put the brackets back on install it back in place we're going to take and pour out whatever oil is in the compressor and measure it and then add that correct amount to the new compressor we want to do that before we put it in place so that way you can stand the compressor up on end and pour it in easily now some compressors will come with the oil already in it so follow the manufacturer of that compressor's recommendations if they tell you that the thing already has oil in it then you don't need to add more oil, okay? Then just double check with your manufacturer on what's going on so you make sure you do what's correct. And also make sure that you have the correct oil for the application that you're using. Like in this case, we're still kind of going with an R12 system, so we're still using uh, mineral oil as opposed to the 134A system, which uses a PAG, P-A-G oil. All right, so that takes us pretty much with putting the compressor on. So I'm going to stop the video, and I'm going to go ahead and put the brackets and the hose and everything on and get the compressor in place, and then I'll start up another video and kind of show you the last few things that we have to do to get the uh, compressor and everything installed or to get the air conditioning system all back together. We only have a few 